everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't been uploading in a while, it's just that I've been really busy over Christmas and New Year, so hopefully I'll have more time to generate content for you guys in the weeks to come. Last October I filmed the making of an 1840s inspired day dress and now I finally got around to editing the footage. So here's part one, making of the corset. The corset I'm making is inspired by a bit later styles, as I didn't like those from the 1840s. I used this drawing as a reference and then cut out paper pattern pieces according to that. I had to make quite a few changes, especially in the waist area, as my waist is not the millimeter wide waist of that time. As it happened, I also needed to make changes at the hips, which turned out to be far too wide. So I had to untape that bit, cut up some of the paper, and retape. Time for another fitting. So I think I'm going to leave it there and transfer the corset onto fabric. So I got some white cotton fabric here, which I'm going to use for the lining of my corset. And I got this white polyester sateen. This I'm planning to use for the outside of my corset. It's probably not that historically accurate, but I still have some of it and I don't really know what to use it for else. So I think I'm going to go with this. So first of all I'm going to take off the tape I used to hold the pattern pieces together. For fitting purposes I had cut out my pattern pieces without any seam allowance. So I'm now going to add a centimeter roughly at each side around the edge of each piece. Also I'm going to add some more um, fabric at the top and bottom as the A4 paper I used for the pattern was a little shorter than I wanted my corset to be so I have maybe another two centimeters at the bottom I'm going to add and maybe even a bit at the top as well so let's cut out piece number one Here I'm cutting a little curve to get that curved upper edge of the corset as shown in the drawing I used as my reference. And even though I will need to cut two of each pattern piece at the end, I'm just going to do one for now just to get a feeling of how the corset will behave later. I'm now going to do this with all my other pattern pieces. And before I forget which number each piece is, I'm going to pin two red pins on here to symbolize number two. I could have used Taylor's chalk, but I don't fancy doing that very much as I have a lot of dust on here afterwards and I don't want to have to wash the fabric. And I'm also going to mark the waist of the corset. Time to pin it all together. And here we have the first half of the corset pinned. Time for another fitting. This already looks really good and I really like how the shape turned out but as I didn't pin the whole seam allowance it's still a bit too large and of course it's also re still really rough around the top and bottom edge where I didn't really shape the corset yet but I think I'll just sew it together now and have another fitting after that.
testing out the fit of the corset yet again, I found that it now fitted really good. So I will now cut out the rest of the pieces and cut off the scrappy lower edge. The outer part of the corset didn't turn out quite perfect as there are a few tiny wrinkles in the seams, especially in this one, but I'll find a way to conceal them. Let's get started and sew these two fabric layers together. Okay, so I have my two layers here. This is the way they'll turn out later. And now I'll lay them on top of another, right sides together. And I'll start by sewing together the top edge. I need to be careful here that I match up the seams. I sew together the upper edge, you saw that, and then I sew together the lower edge and the front of the corset as well. So now here we have something that looks rather like a pillowcase. And if I'll just try it on like this, you'll see that the shape is pretty good and of course it will still get better once we add the boning. So now it's time to assemble the second half of the corset. I've got the front and the lining and once again I'm going to sew together the top edge, the bottom edge and the front edge. So here comes the difficult part. I now have to match up the size of the corset, the height that is, with the height of the other half of the corset set so they're equal. So now I have roughly measured the size and I found out that I have to sew pretty near to the bottom edge this time which might be a bit tricky because of the fraying. So now that we've assembled both halves of the corset It's time to add some hooks and eyes in the front, so we can close the corset without anyone helping us. I originally wanted to use synthetic whalebone for boning, but as my brother still got a whole lot of these heavy duty zip ties left over, I'll use those instead as they are really firm enough and I don't need that much support in my corset. I'll again use my Victorian pattern drawing as a guide as to where the bones should go, though I might use a bit fewer bones than on the drawing itself. I've also heard that you should use about one bone per inch of waist and as my waist is about 24 inches, I'm going to need 24 bones. The drawing shows about 30 bones for the corset, but as I said before, my waist is 24 inches and I'm going to try and use about 24 bones, but I'll space them about as they are sh spaced in this example right here. So the first bone obviously goes right at the front next to the hooks and eyes and I'll just use some pins to pin the correct width of bone into the fabric.
Now that I've sewn the boning channels in place, I'm going to open up the channels at the bottom of the corset. Seems like I put it a bit too tight here, so I'm just going to re-sew that bit a little wider and take it from there. The next channel will be running diagonally down this line. Just like that. Now that the corset is boned, it's time to add the holes for the lacing. And now we can cut off the excess boning. So here we have the finished corset, complete with the flossing. I just did a bit of decorative flossing around the edges, top and bottom. And on the inside I got the cotton fabric lining, which you have already seen in the video. So now let me just put on the corset. And as you can see, it closes in the front with hooks and eyes. And here we have it. Even though it's just made with zip ties, the corset gives really strong support and holds the figure in place a bit. So it does not really crimp the waist that much. So it, for future corsets, I would definitely make the waist a bit narrower. But for my first try, I guess this is pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe below. And keep tuned for the rest of the series. Bye!